Okay, so today we're going to be looking at geometric sequences. Now, we've talked about sequences in the past, but in the past we were dealing with arithmetic sequences. And remember, with an arithmetic sequence, we found that by constantly adding the same amount each time. We called that the constant difference. We always added that to the previous term to figure out what the next term in the sequence would be. Now, if instead of adding each, a number each time, if instead each term after the first is found by multiplying the previous term by a constant number, then what we have is what we call a geometric sequence or an exponential sequence. Now, just like before, we had a constant difference that was being added each time. And we use the letter D to represent that constant difference. In a geometric sequence, again, we're going to be constantly multiplying the same number. So we call that the constant multiplier. And in which case, instead of using M, because M would be confused by slope, which it is not, we're going to use R to represent the constant multiplier. So in this lesson, we're going to be looking at the recursive formula and the explicit formula for a geometric sequence. Remember, each has its pros and cons. They have their advantages and disadvantages. So remember with the recursive formula, the advantages, it's nice to be able to use that to find the first four or five terms in a sequence. But it's not nice if we want to find the 20th term in a sequence, because then you have to know the first 19 terms, which can be kind of a pain be able, in order to be able to find the 20th term. Where in that case, if we want to find the 20th term in a sequence, it would be better to use the explicit formula. But if I wanted to find the first four or five terms with the explicit formula, that in that case would be a pain. So let's first talk about the, the recursive formula for geometric sequence. The recursive formula, remember, if you think of that word cursive is hidden in there, meaning you think of your fancy handwriting as being cursive handwriting, the recursive formula starts out with the fancy bracket. We're going to use G to represent the fact that this is a geometric sequence. So it would be G sub 1 equals some number. And then to find the next term in the sequence, we're always going to have your constant multiplier, which is R, times the previous term. And we have this phrase for integers where n is greater than or equal to 2. Remember, we have that phrase there to tell us that, well, we already know the first term in the sequence because they're going to give that to us in the top row of the um, formula here. And then the bottom row of this formula is only used then to find the second term on. So we would say it's for integers n is greater than or equal to 2. And again, remember g sub n minus 1 is a symbol representing the previous term. R represents whatever your constant multiplier is. So let's look at this example. It says, give the first six terms of the constant and, and the constant multiplier of the geometric sequence. G, where we have this formula. Remember, your constant multiplier, this would be your R, is 3. Now, when, we ask, when we're asked to find the first six terms, please don't forget the obvious. Sometimes people jump right into taking 3 times 18, or 3 times 6 is 18, and so on. Well, then they forget the fact that your first term is going to be 6. It's not 18, it's 6. So the first term in our sequence, again, is the obvious one. It's 6. So to find the next term in the sequence, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take 3 times that previous term. So 3 times 6 is 18. And then 3 times 18, well, that's going to give us 54. Well, now to try to do this in our heads, it's going to get real difficult real fast. So I'm going to show you how to do this on your calculator. So to do this on your calculator, we're going to start out by just typing in whatever our first term in our sequence is. Our first term is 6. Don't hit 6 times 3. Just start out by hitting 6 and hit Enter. So what we've just done is we put this in our calculator so our calculator now knows this is the first term in our sequence. Now we're going to take and find the next term in our sequence by multiplying the previous term by 3. So notice as soon as I hit times, I put in this ANS. That ANS, remember, means the previous answer. So times 3, hit enter, I get 18. Now the nice thing is, is we don't have to do anything else. All we have to do is keep hitting enter. So hitting enter would give us our third term, our fourth, our fifth, and our sixth. So the first six terms in our sequence would be 6, 18, 54, 162, 486, and 1458. Let's put that in our notes. So it would be 54, 162, 486, and 1458. So again, those are the first six terms in our sequence. I'm going to come back to that in a little bit. 
Now, if you want, you can find the first six terms of this sequence. Here, you'd just be taking four times a previous term. You'd start out with your first term being 5. So this next term would be 20. Next term after that would be 80, and so on. But I want to look at the explicit formulas here. The explicit formula for a geometric sequence is going to be this. It's going to be, to find the next term in the sequence, we're going to take your first term, whoops, your first term times your constant multiplier to the n minus 1 power. Now, it's very important to understand that the constant multiplier is the only thing being raised to the n minus 1 power, not the g sub 1. So, for example, let's say if we were looking back at this uh, sequence of numbers that we were just looking at, we were asked to find a, an explicit formula to represent the sequence. Well, our first term in our sequence, we would say, to find, well, to find the next term in the sequence, we would take our first term, which is 6, times your constant multiplier. Well, again, we're multiplying by 3 each time. So every single time we're multiplying by 3, so that's your constant multiplier to the n minus 1 power. Now, this is not the same as 18 to the n minus 1 power. Don't take and multiply those together. You'll get the wrong answer. Because, like I said earlier, the only thing that's being raised to the n minus 1 power is the 3. So we keep this separate. So we leave it as just 6 times 3 to the n minus 1 power. So let's look at another example here. Here they ask us to find the first, fifth, and tenth terms of the sequence. Well, the nice thing is, is to find the first term in our sequence, it should be real easy. Because this is our first term in our sequence, which is 4. So our first term in our sequence is, we can get that just by looking at the formula. Now to find the fifth term in the sequence, that's where we're going to have to use our calculators because we're going to take 4 times negative 3. Now if I put 5 in here for n, well 5 minus 1 is 4, so it's going to be 4 times negative 3 to the fourth power, which when you do that on your calculator is going to give you 324 as your answer. If I want to find the tenth term in the sequence, well now I'd have to take 10 minus 1, well, 10 minus 1 is 9, so it would be 4 times negative 3 to the ninth power, which gives us negative 78,732 as your answer. So you can see that what we're talking about today is very similar to what we've done in the past. It's just that we're using different formulas. But I think you understand the concept. So let's look at a story problem. So let's look at this story problem. It says, suppose a ball is dropped from a height of 10 meters, and it bounces up to 80% of its previous height after each bounce. Let h sub n be the maximum height of the ball after the nth bounce. Now they want us to find an explicit formula for h sub n. In other words, it's going to be in this form that h sub n would equal h sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. Now that's not your answer, it's just helping us uh, get some direction here. So we want to figure out what h sub 1 is. Don't just look at a problem and think that, oh, h sub 1 is 10, because that's not right. Let's get a visual here so we can see what's going on. If we, This is saying that we're dropping a ball from a height of 10 meters, and every time it bounces, it bounces up to 80% of the previous height. So in other words, this 10 meters that it's being dropped from is not your height of the ball after the first bounce. H sub 1, like I said, is the maximum height after after the first bounce. So we need to figure out what that h sub 1 is. That's this point right here. So h sub 1, in order to figure that out, you would take, well, if it's bouncing up to 80% of the previous height, I would take 10 times 0.8, which gives me 8 meters. So the height of the ball after the first bounce is h. I'm sorry, is 8. Sorry. Explicit formula would be h sub n equals 8 times your constant multiplier. Again, your constant multiplier in this case is 0.8 to the n minus 1 power. So to find the maximum height of the ball after the seventh bounce, we do this in our calculators. We would take, again, we're trying to find the height of the ball after the seventh bounce. So height of the ball after the first bounce is still 8 times 0.8. Our exponent, though, is going to be 7 minus 1, which is 6. And when you do that, we end up getting 2.1, approximately, 2.1 meters. 
So that would be our answer. So why don't you guys just take a minute and work this problem out. It says, suppose the ball is dropped from a height of 12 feet and bounces up to 90% of its previous height after each bounce. That H sub n be the maximum height of the ball after the nth bounce. So we again need to figure out what the height of the ball would be after the first bounce. So find an explicit formula for H sub n and then find the maximum height of the ball after the sixth bounce. So why don't you guys take a minute, work this one out, and hit pause when you're ready to check your answer. Or hit pause now and hit play when you're ready to check your answer. Okay, so here's what you should have gotten. So again, we need to first figure out what the height of the ball after the first bounce would be. Which, to find that, you take 12 times 0.9, which when you do that, gives you 10.8. So now our formula then is going to be, to find the next height of the ball after the next bounce, it would be 10.8 times your constant multiplier, which is 0.9, to the n minus 1 power. That's your answer for part A. So to part, the answer for part B, to find the height of the ball after the sixth bounce, you would take 10.8 times 0.9 to the fifth power, which you get 6.38, and this is in feet this time. So hopefully you guys have a better understanding of what it's all about to find geometric sequences and how to find and apply a explicit formula and the recursive formula. Those are the two main pieces. You need to make sure that you memorize those formulas because you'll need to know those for the quiz and for the test. So good luck on your assignment.